Good morning, everybody. Welcome and thank you for coming out today. Welcome to the Hadley Council on Aging. My name is Mike Spanable. I'm the fire chief, town of Hadley. Um, and uh, we just wanted to welcome you here today. Uh, this week is National Home Fire Sprinkler Week, and we welcome the Department of Fire Service, Office of the State Fire Marshal out here to do a presentation on residential home fire sprinklers. And I just want to recognize we have our town administrator, Carolyn Brennan, here with us. We have our select board chair, Jane Nevin Smith, Molly Keegan from the select board. And we want to say thank you for coming out and thank you to the Council on Aging for letting us invade your space again. So I'm going to hand it off to uh, the fire marshal, Peter Ostrowski. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for uh, having us here to commemorate this special week, uh, National Home Fire Sprinkler Week. What we're going to illustrate today is the effectiveness of residential sprinklers. Residential sprinklers um, have not been something that's been adopted in the building codes, but they're something that we encourage as fire service professionals, and we hope in the future that new homes will be built with residential sprinklers included in them. Residential sprinklers will provide the best protection that a family can have, and in multiple family dwellings today, that are constructed or substantially renovated, they are required. But in one and two family homes, it's a consideration that should be uh, really thought through as you design and build your new home. And we're hopeful that we can demonstrate and uh, the effectiveness, but also show you some of the myths that surround residential sprinklers that people bring to us um, that really are not accurate or appropriate. When we look at the amount of time that people have to uh, escape a fire in their home, it has dramatically changed over the last several years. Uh, back in the 70s, we uh, had furnishings and belongings in our homes that were made of uh, natural products, uh, natural fibers and wood, for instance, were in the furniture. Today, what we see is we see more and more plastics, uh, which advance a fire very quickly and also produce a dark, acrid, disorienting smoke. And you're gonna see that illustrated in today's uh, presentation. But what we realize now is when you had 12 to 17 minutes to escape a home when you discovered a fire uh, back in the day, today we have one to three minutes to escape. So when you think about early detection, working smoke alarms, how critically important it is that you are alerted to a fire early uh, I, I don't think you'll see any expression better than what you're about to see today uh, with respect to that. In addition, having a planned escape route, uh, two ways out of your home, a meeting place so that your family can gather so that you know everybody's safe and you can uh, notify the responding firefighters is critically important. And lastly, in addition to protecting your family, uh, and your belongings, residential sprinklers also raise the level of protection for the responding firefighters. When you think about the time it takes to discover the fire, for somebody to call 911 and report the fire, and the fire department to respond from the station to your home, that's valuable time that's lost. And what you'll see is when we reach uh, what we call flashover stage, when everything in the room ignites at the same time, uh, we only have a matter of minutes. And as that fire grows, it's more dangerous to the occupants and it's more dangerous for the firefighters who are gonna work in that space. Lastly, you'll see that the effectiveness uh, really impacts the damage to your home. In, in addition to limiting fire damage, there is reduced water damage because a sprinkler head will usually use 13 to 18 gallons per minute in a residential setting. Whereas the fire hose that these firefighters are going to use to extinguish these rooms, uh, those use 125 to 250 gallons per minute. So when you see that introduction of the water, uh, because of the volume of fire involved, you see that there's extensive uh, water damage as the result. Uh, whereas a single sprinkler head will usually keep that in check. The other myth I want to uh, just kind of dispel is that when the fire uh, causes the sprinkler head to activate. Uh, in the movies, we see that every sprinkler head in the building goes off at the same time. That's not the case. Uh, only a single sprinkler head 
or maybe two, depending on the size of the fire and its rapid growth, uh, would activate. So that is confined to the space where the fire is. It doesn't introduce water throughout the building. So those are a couple of myths um, that I wanted to just touch on and make sure that uh, people are conscious of as we walk through this. So before we get into the first demonstration, let me tell you a little bit about how each room is set up. You can see that each room is set up as a uh, typical living room space. There are no accelerants used in this demonstration. We are using uh, newspaper in a wastebasket as the first location of the fire. That fire is going to progress uh, in the room until the smoke alarm goes off. When the smoke alarm goes off, that's your first activation of or notice for the occupants that there's a, a problem. Shortly after that, you're going to see that the heat rises to the ceiling and activates the sprinkler head at a certain point, and that's when the water starts to flow on the base of the fire. And so you'll see that each room is set up exactly the same. It has exactly the same furnishings, and will have the same fire in, at the incipient stage. As it progresses, the sprinkler head will activate and perform its, its work, and you'll see the firefighters um, fully extinguish that fire, and then uh, will activate the second room uh, where we'll illustrate an unprotected space. With that, let's take a look at a sprinklered space and a fire in that space. Brennan, go ahead. You can see that what we've ignited is some newspaper and a trash can in the back of the room. That fire quickly goes up, and in 40 seconds, we have activation of the smoke alarm. That's your first level of awareness, and that means get out, stay out, and call 911. You can see the fire progress up the curtains. And at 17, 18 seconds, you hear the alarm sound. That's the activation of the, of the sprinkler head. Notice the color of the smoke. It's dark, acrid smoke. It's disorienting. And it quickly gets to the floor level, which is going to impact your ability to escape. But you can see, too, that the flames have quickly died down. And we've held that fire in check. And you'll also notice the change in the smoke as we introduce that 15 gallons of water per minute. And so far we're at um, 34 seconds is when the uh, sprinkler head activated. But you can see that that has pretty much extinguished the fire for all intents and purposes. People were able to escape. They're able to call 911. Fire departments turned out and responding. The fire service is going to continue in and make sure the fire is completely extinguished. But you can see that that space is still a space that you can escape from, you and your family. Now we could let that continue to run uh, throughout the demonstration because that fire is not going anywhere at this point. But what we're going to do is we're going to shut down the sprinkler head now and have the firefighters make sure that we're fully extinguished on that space. And then we're going to demonstrate the adjoining room. You can see the volume of water that's introduced by the nozzle on this fire significantly more than what the sprinkler head did. Now in the case of, uh, we, we want to make sure this um, room is, is fully out. But in the case of a residential home, those firefighters wouldn't necessarily have to bring that hose line into your home. They would go in with a uh, small extinguisher, make sure the fire is completely out and investigate the origin and the cause. You can also see that the uh, furnishings are pretty much intact. There was no extension to the furnishings. The uh, coffee table and the computer, the television and the photograph on the wall, 
And uh, after the demonstration, you're more than welcome to come up and take a closer look at that space. Okay, let's reset the clock, Jake. And Brendan, we're good to go on the second room. This is the room that's not protected with residential sprinklers. Now, when we talk about residential sprinklers, in one and two family homes, this can be fed off of your domestic water system. Okay, so we have the start of the fire. Go ahead, Jake. You can see that advancing rapidly. The smoke alarm sounds at nine seconds. During this, note the smoke, the color, and how the smoke is building from the ceiling down. You can see now that the smoke is pretty much at chest height at less than 30 seconds. You can also see the uh, flames advancing and now getting to the furnishings. The back of the love seat is on fire. You can see unchecked, the fire continues to advance. And that smoke, that black acrid smoke continues to build down. Temperatures at the ceiling are probably at six, 800 degrees. And the high temperatures will continue to build in that space. As they do, it will cause the other furnishings and other products inside the space to uh, off gas. And that's all fuel for the continuation of the fire. You can see the fire advancing and igniting the uh, furnishings. And now we see that the uh, back floor is catching on fire. We're at one minute and 30 seconds. And you can see that that's ordinary combustibles. That's the things that are contained in your home, uh, in er all of our homes. And so you can see that fire just continues rapidly to advance unchecked. Notice some of the products and now we have, at one minute and 45 seconds, we have flashover. You can feel the heat this far back. We're gonna attack that fire so that we don't damage the prop. But you can see that in two minutes, we've reached what firefighters call flashover. That means every combustible in the room has reached ignition temperature and has caught fire. Again, Note the black acrid smoke. Feel that heat all the way back here. Now you can see that the firefighters have to train that hose line in there, you know, for a significant amount of time in order to knock down those flames. That's all water that's being introduced. And as we talked about, that's not survivable. If somebody's in that space, they're not gonna survive. And it's also very dangerous for our firefighters. It's a very dangerous environment for our firefighters to enter into. So I think you can see by our illustration that the effectiveness and the small investment that one can make in construction of a new home is well worth it. You can see that not only is this space survivable by the occupants, a much better environment for the firefighters to operate in, but also it's preserved and retained. The building structure and the materials elsewhere in the in the home that that would probably be occupiable uh, if not immediately very shortly after some water cleanup whereas we reach flashover in two minutes with that modern day furnishing an uh, ordinary combustible fire and and sadly we see these every day 
So you can see the value in making the investment. If you are building or significantly renovating your home, it's a worthwhile investment. One of our advocates for home fire sprinklers reminds me uh, regularly that when I'm building that home for the cost of a granite counter upgrade to put granite countertops in, I can install residential sprinklers throughout the building. Um, and so that's eff effectively the cost at the time of construction. Five years after I build the home, for almost the same money, I can install those gran granite countertops, but I cannot retrofit with sprinklers for the same cost. So it's a worthwhile investment early on in the project. The other thing I like to highlight is whether you have municipal water or you want to use a tank and pump to supply the water for your sprinkler system if you have a well uh, or you uh, have a need for or low water pressure, you can do it with a tank and pump and provide this level of protection. So it's not restricted to people who have uh, municipal water for their domestic water purposes. I'd like to thank uh, the Hadley Fire Department for doing a great job here. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today as we mark this special uh, occasion. And, and I would really encourage you to support any, any kind of effort that's going on and encourage your family and friends, if they have the opportunity to benefit from residential sprinklers, to take full advantage for obvious reasons. You're more than welcome to take a closer look at the extent of the damage and the effectiveness of the sprinklers uh, here. And again, thank you to the uh, officials from Hadley, uh, to Chief Spanknable and the Hadley Fire Department, and for our DFS team uh, as we bring this important information to light. Thank you.